In this life, you can have three fathers. Three fathers. Three fathers, okay? The first father is your natural father. Mm -hmm. What was his job? To create you, help create you, right? To develop you, and what else? To give you direction, right? Train up a child in the way he should go, right? So he's supposed to do that, help cultivate that. And then you have a spiritual father. That's a blessing as well. As you become a grown man, somebody who can speak into your life, the spiritual things, the godly things. You need a spiritual father. You should have one because you don't know everything. You can't see everything. We all need counsel from time to time because we're just human beings, <laughs> okay? You gotta have a spiritual father. Yeah. But if those two men failed you, because they are just men, all right? Your heavenly father will never fail you. Amen. Thank you, my brother. Yes, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 27. <clears throat> Grace and peace to you, brothers, in Jesus' you, name. Brothers, in the name of Jesus our Lord. Name. The name of our yes, Lord. Sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I pray this will be a blessing to all of you. In Jesus' name. That God will use me, man, to be a blessing to you. Amen. All right. So let's get started, man. Genesis 1, 26 through 27 says this. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and in the like in the image of God created he him male and female created he them. Amen. 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 So my question is, fellas, this morning is, man, who are you? Man, who are you? Okay. Uh, now, if you don't know who you are, then we will believe anything that just sounds good. <laughs> okay. So, you know, uh, Satan would love to tell you who you are. <laughs> and who you are not he would love to do it but one thing we know about satan is that his motives ain't pure <laughs> so if you listen to him you're already messed up e get away from that serpent because he's not going to tell you the truth if he does tell you the truth it's to destroy you okay so we don't we don't want to hear what he got to say about who we are okay because his motives is not right we, we know what the bible says about satan he's a liar right he's also he, he's here to steal kill and destroy and not only that he's also wanting to embarrass you and humiliate you in the process <laughs> okay he will do that believe that okay i'm sorry believe that <laughs> he will embarrass you okay that's what he's trying to do all right and we can't believe what the world you know says about us because their motives are not pure you know, this world is, is driven by what? Lust, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the part of life. It's this very selfish and self-centered world. So all they care is, you know, what can you do for them? What have you done for me lately? So they're going to, you know, label you whatever fits them. You know, they want you to be what they need. Okay? So we can't really rely on the world either to tell us who we are. Right? right. We can't rely on ourselves to tell us who we are. Right? Uh, because, you know, we're the same way. You know, and, and we're, we're, you know, we're given to, you know, that the grass is greener on the other side, that somebody else has something better than what I got. You know, we're never happy or satisfied with who God created us to be, who we are. We always, you know, think we should be more or, you know, you know, something else. OK, so we can't really rely on ourselves either to, to define who we are. OK, it's just, that's, that's not a good idea. All right. So for me, it only leaves one more person really to talk to. And to tell us who we are okay and that's god himself you know let the lord tell you who you are man who are you well let's have a chat let's have a chat with god in his word and it will tell you who you are okay he will tell you who you are so this is a quote here i got from james freeman clark and this is what it says it's about manliness okay what is manliness manliness means perfect manhood and as woman, womanliness implies perfect womanhood. Manliness is the character of a man as he ought to be, 
as he was meant to be. You know, we're men, right? And so sometimes, you know, what you know, we ask ourselves, what is manliness? You know, what is manhood? What does that look like? Well, again, if you can't go to Satan to find that out, you can't go to the world and you definitely can't go to yourself. Let's go to God. Let's go to the word of God to tell us what manliness is, right? Man, who are you? Okay. So here we go. Uh, as I read Genesis, there are four words that stuck out to me. Okay. And the first word is potter. The potter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it says here, and God said, let us make. God said, let us make. Right. Uh, who was that? Isaiah 64, 8 says this. But now, O oh Lord, thou art our father. We are the clay. And thou art thou our potter. Okay. And we all are the works of thy hands. So what is that telling us? God is the one that created us. He's the potter. And we're the clay. Made of water, made of dirt, and some other elements sprinkled in there as well. <laughs> okay? But we are clay in his hand. We, he is the potter. He's the master. The Bible also says that the thing that's formed can't tell the thing that's forming it what to make it. <laughs> okay? You can't judge the potter. You know, he's going to make you a vessel, that's, a vessel that seems good to him. Yeah. Or we make you a vessel that seems good to him to make, the Bible says. Okay? So he's making all of us. He's made us and he's remaking us into a vessel that seems good to him. Okay? He's the potter. So what is our job? We ought to just worship the creator. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Yeah. Give him appreciation. You know, give him glory. Give him honor. Right? That's the least we can do because we are the clay. He's the potter. You know, we didn't choose anything. You didn't choose your age, your gender, any demographic. You didn't choose anything. You didn't choose your talents. The potter did that. <laughs> so why do we think we get to choose, you know, really anything else? You know, he created us to be here. And to be, and to be honest with you, fellas, it's a blessing. Life is a blessing. Even though it doesn't seem like it at times, but life is a blessing. Okay? We just got to get through this, this uh, proving ground of earth to get to the fullness of that blessing of life, which is, you know, eternal life, life, you know, everlasting, and immortality, okay? Well, life is a blessing, okay? Uh, even though at times you feel like, you know, like Paul said, I despair even of life. I want to kill myself. I'm going through so much stuff, okay? Life can feel like that sometimes, but don't, don't forget, life is a blessing, okay? Even though it gets hard, fellas, and it will get hard, all right? Yes, it will. So, yeah, man, <laughs> the Bible also talks about <clears throat> fathers, you know, and uh, fathers are vital to our existence, our development, and our direction. Okay? Fathers are vital to our existence, to our direction, and to our development. You are a blessed man if you have, if you have a father. Okay? And you are a blessed man if you, had a, if you had three fathers. In this life, you can have three fathers. Three fathers. Three fathers. Okay? The first father is your natural father. What was his job? To create you, help create you, right? To develop you, and what else? To give you direction, right? Train up a child in the way he should go, right? So he's supposed to do that, help cultivate that. And then you have a spiritual father. That's a blessing as well. As you become a grown man, somebody who can speak into your life, the spiritual things, the godly things. You need a spiritual father. You should have one because you don't know everything. You can't see everything. We all need counsel from time to time because we're just human beings, <laughs> okay? You gotta have a spiritual father. Yeah. But if those two men failed you, because they are just men, all right? Your heavenly father will never fail you. And he will make sure that you have exactly what you need for your development, you know? And you, you're in his hands, ultimately. We're all in his hands, okay? So you are a blessed man if you got three fathers. So my question was, man, who are you? Who are you? Well, you're definitely not somebody who's an accident, <laughs> okay? You are not an accident, right? Because you got a potter, he created you, right? He's your father. He said, he told uh, the prophet Jeremiah, I knew you before you even created in your mother's womb, I knew you. You're not an accident. Even though you might've been an accident according to your parents, 
That might have been a mistake, but God allowed you to be born. Okay? So you're not an accident. All right? Amen? Amen. Amen. You are not an accident. So, man, who are you? Well, first and foremost, gentlemen, just know I'm not an accident. I'm here on purpose. God created me. He allowed me to be here. Life is a blessing, and I need to see it that way. I don't care what I'm going through. I got to see it at that way. All I got to do is just worship the creator. Stay close to him. Stay close to him. Okay? So that's the first word I saw out of that scripture, fellas. The potter. The potter. Okay? The second word I saw was pattern. Pattern. Okay? Because it says here, let us make man in what? Our image. After our likeness. And then it says later on, it says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. What do I mean by pattern? What are you patterning yourself after? <laughs> what do you pattern your life that your life after? Are you patterning after this world? Are you patterning after somebody who's a, a sinner? <laughs> right? Or are you patterning your life after God, after Jesus Christ? Okay. So yeah, I don't know if what God actually meant when he said create man in my image. Was that figuratively? Was that literally? I don't know. But what we do know is that he said, be ye holy, for I am holy. That's what he said. We know that, right? He also said, you know, that he's not, he's not evil. So we can't, we shouldn't be evil. He's not wicked. We shouldn't be wicked. He's not perverted. We shouldn't be perverted, right? He's holy. We should be holy. He's righteous. We should be righteous. So we do know that. <laughs> we do know that. Okay. So we are to follow that pattern, right? We are supposed to what? Get the mind of Christ, right? Make the choices he would make. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus say? Right? Get the character of Christ, the fruits of the spirit. And by the way, who was that spirit? It's the spirit of God and it's the spirit of Christ. Same person. Okay. The Holy Spirit. All right. So that's what we are to pattern ourselves after. You know, he is the pattern. And that's what we are to, you know, that's the rule and the boundary and the guide for our life. So, man, who are you? <laughs> Someone who does not live in a random way. Okay? We don't live in random ways. We don't just do whatever we feel and say whatever we say. Okay? We are a man of God. Or not only a man of God, we are a man of Jesus Christ. We are a man of Jesus Christ. Okay? All right. So what's the third word? The third word I saw in this this here, uh, purpose. I saw purpose. Okay. So what is the purpose? Why did I say that? Because it says this, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Okay. So we are to rule as stewards of God's creation, not of, not as owners. <laughs> because the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Not the earth is Adam, man, and the fullness thereof, right? But he did give us dominion to rule over it, okay? So how do you rule? We rule as stewards, as managers, right? Okay, because it belongs to God, okay? So that's our purpose. Uh, losing my space here. Oh, okay, so yeah, the earth is the Lord's fullness thereof. Also, we are to rule specifically, okay, individually and collectively. We rule specifically, individually, and collectively. What do I mean by specifically? All of us have been given talents and abilities and skills, okay, specifically. So what is that that you God has given you? You know, in the old days, somebody was a smith, right? Bucks about, you know, these people, they worked in the, you know, the field of artistry. You know, these people work in this field of this. And these people did that. These people did that. It's okay. It's okay to be a people that excel at certain things. It's taboo to even talk about it nowadays. The people get so offended. It's so, so sensitive. <laughs> okay. But the Bible talks about that. That certain people, not just individuals, but certain people will excel at certain things. It's okay. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. And we see it very clearly what the individual nations and races and kindreds and tongues excel at. That's all right. But here's the thing about that. You know, everybody can't do everything. 
<laughs> we all need each other, okay? We, you know, we all have pros and cons and strengths and weaknesses. That, that brings everybody to the table of humanity. We all got something to offer. But the problem is that when you, if you think you have nothing to offer, that's a problem. Because man, who are you, okay? Part of who you are is, is, your, is your talents, your abilities, what God has given you. You know, somebody's got the oil. <laughs> somebody's got the precious metals. Everybody don't have everything. Okay, somebody's got the spices. <laughs> One of the biggest things in this world is trade. <laughs> People kill over trade, okay? Trade really makes the world go around. International trade, it's a big deal, okay? So it's okay. So specifically, individually, and collectively. Okay, we all have something to bring to the table. We all have a purpose, and it's okay. It's okay. But know your purpose. Know what you were created to do. Know your talents, all right? Don't let people just, because if you don't know it, other people can see it if you don't see it. And depending on who they are, they'll exploit it. <laughs> mm. They'll make money on your talents and give you nothing or give you chump change, okay? <laughs> and you will willing to take it because you don't know your value, all right? God's giving you value, man. He's giving you value, all right? So, man, again, man, who are you? Someone whose life is not without significance. Who are you? Someone whose life is not without significance. God has given your life significance. He's given it meaning, okay? Have you discovered it? Sometimes you don't see it. Other people can see it and they'll tell you, <laughs> okay? And that's okay, that's okay, it's okay. And I, you know, I, I love the fact that everybody can do everything because it, I think it's God's way of humbling ourselves. Even though people may think they can do everything, that don't make it true, <laughs> okay? I <laughs> don't make it true. Everybody can't do everything. You know, everybody has a role, everybody has a part to play and a piece to say, okay? And it's okay, it's God's, it's God's design and I love it, I love it, okay? Oh, so what's the fourth thing I saw, gentlemen? The fourth thing I saw was partner, partner. Why do I say that? Because it says here, male and female created he them. Male and female created he them. So gentlemen, you're not just by yourself. We're not just by ourselves, okay? We have partners. And the first partner is the female. <laughs> the second partner is, uh, let me see if I can find what I wrote here, sorry. Uh, your neighbors, there you go. Your second partner is your neighbors, You're those around you. Okay, and the third partner is the church. So let's talk about the woman first. Uh, first, talk about the woman first. She's our partner. And if you've been around a woman very long, because we're men, if you've been around a woman very long, you will find out pretty quickly that yes, we are both human beings, but we're two different models. <laughs> yeah. We are two different versions of human beings, two different models, because we don't think the same. We don't process the same. We don't desire the same things, <laughs> you know? And it's okay, it's okay, you know? Because when you got partners, the thing about, things about having partners is that you have to learn to respect them, to appreciate them, to see what they bring to the table, right? To see, you know, what, what are they strong at that I'm weak at and vice versa, okay? And dealing with women, it's the same way. You know, if you got a wife, it's the same way. You know, the Bible says, her, go her according to knowledge, right? Uh, honor her as the weaker vessel. You know, so many things. And if it was just a man's world, brother, it'd be a cold world. <laughs> it'd be a cold world if it was just a man's world, all right? But God has brought the woman, woman on the scene, right? And she brings something different to this world. So gentlemen, I hate to break it to you, but it's not just a man's world. From the beginning, it was a man's and a woman's world. <laughs> We were to rule and reign together <laughs> over God's creation. Okay, it's not just. A, I know what he says. The man's world, because God has chosen the male to be the leader of that relationship. Okay, but think about being leaders, gentlemen. If you've been a leader very long, you'll learn real quick about leadership. That when everybody else comes to work, they get the clock out and go home at a certain time. But leaders don't get the clock out. You on salary, and you work till the job is done. <laughs> okay, that's leadership. Leadership is sacrifice, and we are to sacrifice ourselves for our progress. 
okay? Particularly for our wives, you know, and women. So the Bible tells us, that, tells us that very clearly, you sacrifice. Leadership to me equals sacrifice. Bottom line. <laughs> Everybody don't want to be a leader because they know, those who do know, it's sacrifice of your time, of your energy, of your abilities, of your money, of a lot of things, okay? But it's okay. It's okay. There's a reward in that, all right? So women, yes, they're human beings, but a different version, a different model. But we rule together and thank God for them. They, they, some people say they complete you, right? You know, they're our help. Uh, I mean, I would say they, uh, they complement us, right? Like the other half, you know? And God, you know, God can identify with male and female. The Bible, you, you know, you read Proverbs, the Bible refers to wisdom in the fem, uh, feminine sense. Yeah, feminine sense. She wisdom. Okay? So God's not afraid, you know, to identify with women. I, I believe that, you know, we both come from God. I believe God is both and more, infinitely more. Okay? That's just my belief. We both come from God. God can identify with, with all of it. Okay? And at the end of the day, we all have the same needs, but we're still human beings. We both got the same needs, all right? So that's women. Uh, our neighbor. <laughs> Again, we're not here alone, gentlemen. <laughs> There's other people on this earth. <laughs> and we got to be able to get along with other people. And the Lord commanded us to love your neighbor as yourself. How do you do that in practical ways? First and foremost is respect them. Respect people, man. Respect what they bring to the table. Respect what they got to say. Let me just at least hear your opinion, right? Again, everybody can't do everything, okay? So love your neighbor, respect them. Be kind to them. Be Christ-like to them, right? Be helpful. Yeah, be, be uh, considerate, right? Ignore their weaknesses and look at their strengths, right? Try to help them cage their weaknesses. Get under control if you can. Be sympathetic. Take time, right? Uh, learn. If you, if you, you, know, you got to work with them, learn their love language. You know, learn, learn. You know, uh, ignore their mistakes. We all going to make mistakes sometimes, right? Be kind, be empathetic, be encouraging. All those things is, uh, uh, yeah, all those things are, is being Christ-like. It's, it's, it's loving your neighbor in practical ways, okay? Why? Because they, your, people are your partner. You're working, you, we live here together. This is our neighborhood. This is our world, <laughs> okay? We got to work together here, right? Okay? And the last one is the church. We know what the Bible says about the church. We ought to love our brethren. You know, if you don't love the brothers, the Bible says, don't come tell me you love God. Because <laughs> so you can't, you can't, you know, hate the brethren and love God. It's impossible. You got to love the body of Christ. You don't love the body of Christ, you don't love God. See a lot. Let that sink in. Okay? To, to, to stay away from the body of Christ is not a good thing. <laughs> okay it's not a good thing right because we are to you know we work together as a as a unit okay to accomplish god's will all right so and 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 you know the bible talks about ruling and reigning right having dominion over the earth the body of christ as a whole has authority and john you need to hear this you probably don't you, you know you probably don't have a thought about it and i haven't thought about it i thought about it recently because you now you know studying for this lesson but uh you know, the church has authority and if you don't know that, you will listen to what Satan is telling you, that you're insignificant, that the body of Christ don't need you, <laughs> okay? But that's not the truth. You know, the body of Christ, we have authority. The church is what? The pillar and the ground of truth. We have been given the keys to the kingdom of heaven, <laughs> okay? Uh, the gates of hell should not prevail against the church. Whether we are on the offensive or defensive, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. We have authority. We've been seated in heavenly places with Christ. That means we are ruling and reigning right now in the spiritual realm, okay? Demons have no power over us. Satan has no power over us. Only power that he has over us is the power that we give him. But any, in any kingdom, you know, it's going to be attacked. The enemies are, are going to come against it, right? They're going to try to take you out, you know, commit genocide or what have you. Satan would love to commit genocide, <laughs> take the church out, Okay? <laughs> but the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. So gentlemen, realize you're a part of God's kingdom. You're a part of the brotherhood of Christ and you have authority. You have power, right? You don't have to give in to Satan and what he's saying, okay? So gentlemen, who are you? Well, you are somebody who is not alone. 
<laughs> you are not alone. Okay, because you have the opposite sex. We have we have women, we have our neighbors, and we have the body of Christ. We're not alone. You may feel alone, but you're not alone. You're not alone. Okay. <clears throat> There's one other thing I want to talk about before I get out of here. Uh is an acronym. You know, I'm known for the acronyms. Uh, but it's one that recently really uh helped me. Okay. And you know, on the same topic of partnership. Uh, it's called WIF, W-I-F-F, WIF, okay? Uh, you know, softball, when you miss, when you miss, you miss the ball, they call that whiffing. You know, you, you whiff, okay? But in life, you can whiff. We can miss the mark. We can miss it, okay? And a lot, of bro, a lot of people are missing. A lot of men are missing. I was missing, okay? So what does WIF stand for? You know, when we are W, a wretch. We're being wretched, okay? I is, uh, uh, we'll be doing any idiotic things, okay? Uh, making bad choices. F, we're doing, making foolish choices. And the other F is when we're making choices that are faithless. That's a big one. You know, God wants faith. He wants you to have faith. Yeah. Don't be faithless, have faith, okay? So if you, if you, if you have those things, you are with him, you're missing because you, you're being wretched, idiotic, foolish, and faithless, okay? But, and those things will lead to something. It will lead to what I call ED. <laughs> we know what ED is for the male, erectile dysfunction. You don't wanna talk about that, <laughs> okay? You don't wanna talk about that, okay? Uh, but for me, ED stands for embarrassment and disappointment. When we with gentlemen, we feel embarrassment and disappointment. Okay, and we don't want to feel that way, and we don't have to feel that way. A lot of it's based on our choice, but I'll tell you this there is a correlation between erectile dysfunction and you know, embarrassment, disappointment. They both uh, leave you feeling impotent, without power, without strength. Okay, and that's not a good thing, and you don't have to feel that way because, again, you are part of the church, you do have power, you do have strength, even though Satan's telling you you don't. Even so society saying, you know, you know, that's foolishness, what you're talking, what you're preaching, what you're teaching. That's foolishness to us. What are you talking about? That doesn't work. <laughs> okay. It does work. It does work. Okay. We are not impotent. We do have strength. We do have power. Okay. So let's stop with him, gentlemen. Let's stop with them. All right. Because uh, I've done it. You know, I've done it. And just recently I got over some things. You know, I kept whiffing on some things. And I'm tired of whiffing. I'm tired of whiffing. I'm ready to do it God's way. I'm ready to embrace my partners, right? Embrace what God has made me to be. Be the man God is calling me to be, okay? So I'm ready for that. Are you ready for that? Hopefully you are. All right, gentlemen. So to help us understand who we are as men, we need to first start with who created us. Who are we follow? Who we follow, I'm sorry, who we follow, what we made, what we are made to do, and who we do it with. That's what I covered today, okay? Who created us, who we follow, what we are made to do, and who we do it with, okay? So man, who are you? Let's, say, let, let's let God tell us who we are. This is what God said from the beginning. Go back to the beginning, the book of Genesis, first mention, law first mention, right? From the beginning, this is what, this is what he said, this is what he said we are, okay? Also. So God is our creator, our heavenly father, uh, and we are accountable to him. We are to choose, think, feel, and act like him. The earth is the earth and everything in it is our responsibility, okay? And it is a man's world and a woman's world, okay? Because she is our partner. So man, who are you? A man who has a potter, a pattern, a purpose, and a part. To God be the glory, gentlemen. Thank you, and God bless you.